All right, I'm going to go ahead and get started. It is 11 o'clock for me anyway. Um, this is the UX functional update. Uh, I, pres I added the link to the presentation in the chat. I wasn't able to update the calendar invite, so my apologies on that one, but if you're curious, you can go ahead and link to the presentation there. Start out with my team slide. So anyone that's new, this is the UX team, uh, no particular order. And I just wanted to mention that there was some strange scheduling last time due to Memorial Day. My functional update got pushed. So we actually went over the majority of 9.4 in our last update. So I'll only cover maybe one or two items. So if you want to go back and look at the 9.4 uh, items that we covered last time, there's a link there for you. So uh, I think this is the only item that I've added from 9.4, but it's, it's a pretty neat one. So uh, coming up, we've cleaned up the issuable lists. The goal here was to adjust the layout so the labels wrap nicely as the screen size is reduced. So less clutter, a lot more polish, easier to see on, on smaller screens. So there was a lot of feedback <laughs> uh, on the confidential banner redesign, which was released in 9.3. You might remember that that lovely black bar that would follow you as you went up and down the page. Um, <clears throat> the redesign sounded good in theory, um, but it was really intrusive uh, for users when we put it into practice. Uh, so we rolled that back. Uh, the goal here really is to let users know that they are viewing a confidential issue, not to distract them from the task at hand. So in this new design, the icon is uh, in the header as an, with an orange background. So you can see it right here. Um, makes it readily visible, but not obtrusive. Once you scroll, it moves from here down to this bottom uh, right-hand corner. Uh, so it fades and it moves to that bottom right. The banner only appears when scrolling and the background of the banner is transparent, so it's not covering up anything uh, and it's not really loud and in your face. And really, we were thinking that confidentiality matters most when you're leaving a comment, right? You kind of want to see who's going to be able to see this comment. Um, so the confidential issue banner will fade out when the comment box is opened and the comment box will now have a confidentiality message to alert users that they're making a comment on a confidential issue. And then in the sidebar is how we're going to, uh, control whether it is confidential or not. So if you look here in the first, when the issue is confidential, uh, there'll be a little eye icon. It'll tell you it's confidential and you have the ability to edit that. So when editing that, you get a confirmation. Uh, you can go ahead and cancel uh, or turn off confidentiality, which will then make it visible. Um, we changed the verbiage a little bit, tried to keep it really simple. So if it's confidential, it'll say this is confidential. If it's not confidential, it will just say none. Nothing has, uh, it's not confidential. I felt this was a little bit easier to see and understand pretty quickly. Navigating files in merge request diffs. Uh, this is one that I think will make a big difference. Uh, so in the first screen here, you'll, show, you'll see that it's showing how many change, uh, files were changed, uh, how many additions, how many deletions. Um, we want to keep this accessible at all times. So when you scroll, it will dock itself right here with a little drop down. And over on the right hand side, you'll actually see the X additions, Y deletions will be shown in a quick and easy to understand format. Oops, sorry about that. Uh, after clicking the little drop down, you'll get the ability to search and look through all the different files. So you can look for specific additions, deletions, changes that were made. We'll also improve share locking feature for subgroups. So when a parent group has a lock on sharing projects with other groups, this restriction should apply on the subgroups as well. Subgroups should be able to apply a lock if the parent group does not have one. Um, subgroups cannot release a lock if the parent group has one. And the UI will explain this to the user so it's very clear what they're doing. All right, I'm just checking chat real quick. All right. So, Unscheduled UX issues currently in progress. 
transactional batch merge request comments. Uh, so we're trying to prevent notification overload by grouping comments, staging comments, and then submitting them all at the end. That way you'll only get one notification instead of a gazillion of them. Multiple discussions per line in merge request diffs. So currently in merge request diffs, you can start a vertical line of comments. It's essentially one discussion. Um, so it, we're gonna enable the ability to branch out to mul multiple discussions. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's still early for me. Uh, for each of those discussions, enable resolvability and remove the ability to resolve individual comments. Uh, so going forward, you can only resolve entire discussions. And this is just one example of all the ways that we're going to make empty pages awesome everywhere in GitLab. And then we have some mobile optimizations for the merge request widget. Uh, it's the first iteration towards improving the merge request widget for smaller viewpoints, viewports, especially mobile. Uh, we're doing a lot of uh, work in the mobile area trying to optimize and make sure that things are clean and clear and easy to use. So UX improvements ready for implementation. Uh, right now, we have 124 open issues with the UX ready label. So this one, another beautification of uh, empty screens. <laughs> it's actually logging in user uh, when setting up a new instance. We've uh, redesigned this to include text uh, on the downloads page and command line telling the user where to go after installation. Tori did some great work going through this to really understand what was confusing and what was difficult for those first uh, coming into a new instance. So um, we've improved the first page as well by including the username of the admin. It was in the details to begin with, but it was easy to forget by the time you got to the stage. And allows them to create a password and automatically log the user in. This was here last time. I'm just uh, going over it again. It still hasn't made its way in. It has 30 likes. It's currently in the backlog. Um, so display time tracking totals on the milestone page. Uh, show aggregated values for time spent, time estimated, and time remaining. Assessing the milestone progress based on open close issues. And time tracking is possible by looking at the issue counts, progress bar, and time tracking stats. This has a lot of really, really positive comments on it, so it'd be great to get it in uh, sometime soon. These as well haven't quite made its way in yet, uh, improving our confirmation dialogues, uh, keep uh, users from making uh, mistakes. Uh, with clearer uh, directions and instructions on what's, what's actually happening when they click a button. And any questions on any of that? What I'm actually gonna do next is go over the UX OKRs that we put together, kind of explain how we came to those OKRs, and then what issues uh, we'll be working through to support those. Any questions? I'm gonna keep moving. All right, so OKRs. So the first step we took uh, was to look at the high level objectives to determine where UX could offer support. Um, objective one relates to sales and numbers and while good UX certainly contributes to increased sales and revenue, um, we need to be able to track specific initiatives. And objective three uh, relates generally to recruitment and hiring company-wide, and I think we have an awesome team, um, but I really felt like UX needed to focus uh, on objective two for this quarter. So underneath that objective, there are uh, CEO objectives. So the first CEO objective relates mostly to performance, uh, performance of uh, GitLab.com and, and our uh, our product in general. So we focused on the other two objectives. Um, from these, I identified, or we identified uh, usability goals that'll allow us to develop GitLab's, GitLab's UX vision and strategy. So this is how we kind of worked through each one. So I took, or we took the, the overall objective and we kind of broke it down to what problem is this talking about? So what are the problems uh, that are arising that's not enabling this to happen. Then we lay out how GitLab as a business can solve these problems. So this allows us to then define specifically how UX can support these business goals. And then as part of the process, 
We also make sure to define how we'll measure whether or not we're successful in attaining these goals. And sometimes that can be a little bit more tricky in the UX area than in maybe other areas, right? We need to have very specific stats and we have to have starting points and understand uh, where something was before we made a change and then reevaluate after, uh, after the change. So from this whole process of kind of looking through, de defining the problems, the objectives, how we can assist, we come up with our final UX OKR. And this may be different for each team. I'm not sure how the other teams uh, went through and did their OKRs. So it'd be interesting really to see how other teams uh, kind of focused in on these. So the first UX OKR is to make it easier to find and use advanced GitLab features. And I've just put some of the issues related to this. Um, some of, have been completed or in process and are in the future. Uh, improve navigation, iterate on it every month. And these, are, again, are just some of the issues. I didn't talk about navigation today because we're still in the midst of kind of really putting together uh, colors and implementation, getting the feature toggle in there. I'll talk about that extensively in the next uh, functional update. Improving perceived performance. Uh, I think that there are definitely areas that we can assist in helping where maybe performance seems to be lagging and we can assist with some UI elements to make time seem to go a little bit quicker. Um, there's always going to be times when something takes a little bit to load, skeleton loading, um, loading of issue title and description before the rest of it gets in there can really help with that. And then this last one is, is rather large. So measure usability of critical user flows to identify areas needing improvement. And there's kind of two little sub subsets to that. The idea here is to get really good uh, concrete research done on critical areas and identify where our users are getting stuck, where things may be confusing, or where we may be able to save them time and uh, enable them to get what they need to do uh, done a lot faster. So we have a UX research roadmap that we have put together. And the way this is going to work uh, is that each roadmap generates three or more areas of testing. So in each roadmap, we're not just testing one area. Right now, we're testing uh, dashboard notifications and merge request. Um, and that's all done in one release cycle. So each release cycle will be testing anywhere from three to maybe up to six different areas, gathering information and then finding ways to uh, optimize and adjust those flows. Questions? Comments, thoughts? I need Larry in here with a laugh track. That'd be the best. Where's Larry when you need him? <laughs> All right, fantastic. Last slide. Shout outs. Um, it's we had a condensed amount of time between our last uh, update, so I don't have as many shout outs, but I wanted to thank Marsha and, and Jay Vargas for helping with the new blog theme and helping Dimitri write his fantastic uh, travel uh, around the world blog that he just released last week. So really appreciate that. All right, I'll let everybody go. Hope everyone has a great week. Thanks. Bye-bye.